why equity dilution is good for startups. When I started my company, I was obsessed with retaining every percent of equity I could. And I remember telling my mentor and advisor, Dave, about my philosophy. Dave looked at me and laughed. Then he said something I'll always remember. Brett, dilution is good. I was shocked. However, Dave was right because dilution really is good. In today's video, I'm going to explain why Dave was right that dilution is good, how you should explain dilution to your team, and then finally, how you can optimize your team's equity retention. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Brett. On my channel, I help early stage startup CEOs like you raise money and grow your startup. So if this sounds like you, then hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Let's get started. Let's go back to my conversation with Dave. I asked Dave to explain why he felt dilution was good. Dave said, most startups need to raise money in order to keep going. That's why dilution is good. Because without being diluted, you can't raise money. It's pretty basic, isn't it? There's an obvious trade being made when you raise money between you and your investors. But the trade is a good trade because you get more money and the value of your company increases usually. So even though you own less of the company, what you own is more valuable. Let's work through an example so you have an idea of how this works. Let's say you raise an initial seed round of funding of $500,000 and you give away 15% of the company. So you're diluted by 15%. That means the pre-money valuation is $2.83 million. The post-money valuation is $3.3 million. And your equity is now worth $2.83 million. Now, some time passes and you raise the next round of funding, which is $2 million in this example. But you have to give up 20% of the company to get the $2 million. So your ownership is now 68%. Now the pre-money valuation is $8 million and the post-money valuation is $10 million. And your ownership percentage is now worth $6.8 million, which is 68% of $10 million. Not bad. Now more time passes and you're ready to raise a larger $15 million round of funding. Again, you have to trade 20% ownership to get the money. So now you own 54% of the company. Now the pre-money valuation is 60 million and the post-money valuation is 75 million and your stake is now worth 40.8 million. Now things are really cooking at your startup, but you need more money, a lot more money to really scale. So you raise $50 million and you're diluted by 15% this time. Now the pre-money valuation is $283.3 million and the post-money valuation is $333.3 million. You own 46% at this stage, but it's worth $154 million. Your company continues to excel and you and your investors decide that the time is right to IPO your company. You choose to work with Goldman Sachs. So IPO means you will issue more stock, 10% in this case, to sell on the open market. After the roadshow, the valuation of the company for the IPO is set at $1 billion, which means you're going to sell $100 million worth of stock. So the pre-money is now $900 million, and your stake is now 42%, but it's worth $416 million. That's why dilution is a good deal for everybody involved. I remember having a conversation with one of my investors about equity. Gil said to me, there's a percentage that you're going to end up with at the end of this that makes sense. And there's a percentage that I'm going to end up with at the end of this that makes sense. 
Then he paused for effect. And then he said this, the rest is bullshit. <laughs> I always liked Gil's response because it was rooted in fairness for both sides. And that's how it should be. Now, I'm not saying that you should give away equity that you don't have to give away when you raise money. That would be foolish. And I don't expect you to be foolish. I am saying to keep your eye on the prize. And the prize is raising more money so your company can go on. Now, how do you explain dilution to your team? Again, let's go back to my conversation with Dave. Dave told me that before he raised a round of funding, he put signs up around his company that said, dilution is good. Dave said to me, I wanted the employees to understand that, yes, they will own less of the company, but the value of what they will own will likely go up. And more importantly, the company will go on. What I found worked best was just being really transparent with your team. I found again and again, the more open you are about what's going on in your company, the more trust you build with your team. For example, I would work through the same example I just shared with you with my team. Now you'll have to be prepared for the inevitable questions you're going to get about why you gave up what you did. I would always answer with an answer like this. Think of it like the stock market. We need money to keep going, so we have to sell a percentage of the company to get the money. The buyers who determine the market price are our investors. That's how the price got set up for this round. We went with the best deal we had available to us. Now you might get asked a question like this. Why did we have to give away so much? And you should answer honestly, depending upon what the market conditions were. This leads to the final section of today's video. How can you optimize your team's equity retention? Your team is going to be focused on themselves, not surprisingly. And one of your jobs as CEOs is to have their back. You have their back by pushing your investors to refresh their stock options. Simply put, refreshing stock options means you're granting new options to your team so they always have more unvested equity coming, which increases employee retention and improves your company's performance. Watch my video, Protecting Startup Employees from Dilution, explained for a more detailed explanation of how refreshing works. Now, if this content is resonating with you, then please hit the like button right now. Here's a summary of what we've learned today. <laughs> Number one, dilution is good because you're making a trade for money in return for percentage ownership in your company, usually at an increase in valuation. Number two, you should be transparent with your team about dilution because your openness will build trust. And number three, finally, fighting for your team by pushing your investors to refresh your team's stock options increases employee retention and performance. Now, what did you learn from today's video? Put your answer in the comments column below today's video. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments column too, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Now, I have one more thing for you today. It's my free startup pitch deck template. It has all the slides you need to develop an awesome pitch deck. Click the link below today's video and it's yours for free. And for more great content, click on the link at the end of today's video. And if you haven't already, then click the subscribe button to get notified every time I release a new video. Now, I'm Brett at brettjfox.com. Thanks for watching today. Take care. Bye.